Achievement Hunter is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy right now at expressvpn.com slash achievement. Yep, makes no sense. That is sad. What up? Welcome to Off Topic, hey! everybody. And that RTTV was... is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Let me get through this. Protect your online privacy today at expressvpn.com slash RTTV. I'm your host, Jeremy Dooley. And joining me this week is Jack Patillo, Ryan Haywood, and John Reisinger. And is that Bonjour. it? We're Bonjour. live on RTTV right now. Join us in the chat. Create a free Rooster Teeth account today. That's it. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Where's right? That's it. That's you're it. So, that's it. That's so it. Efficient that's all the ads. intro. We've you're, done it. You're not Michael. I read it. I'm not Michael. Michael and Lindsay are busy today. Alfredo is out. Um, Matt's doing something important right now. Fiona's busy. Uh, who am I missing? Everybody's busy. Trevor's got a meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, John came in and he said, so who died and caused me to be here? And we just went, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> literally everybody. everybody. If I do this, does it look like I have an idea? Ooh. <laughs> that thing's so cool. <laughs> oh, look, it's a banana leaf. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, Somewhat you're a real Sarah streamer boy me. now. Yeah. No, no, this is not my streamer st stuff. This is for something else. That's for, oh. some, that's for a rooster teeth thing, yeah. Real on, streamer let me get boys the exact get those. quote. So I, I do this thing where we have our Monday, we have meetings every morning at 10 a.m. And so it's usually just an opportunity for me just to harass people. And it's great. And especially, usually it's Sarah. And then uh, today, Ryan was talking about his new Nano Leaf, which yes. is that light behind him. And Matt's got one too, he's working with. And, and Sarah said, and I quote, what the hell is a banana leaf? Yeah. And so. <laughs> which, uh, you know, if you've never heard Nano Leaf, that's a fair question. What is a Nano Leaf? A something leaf that you were talking about. <laughs> But so, uh, it was a good weems thing. Yeah. That was one of my favorites in it was recent good. days. It was good. It was the banana leaf. Usually, usually it's throwing, it's, it's either making something plural or making something singular that shouldn't be. The, but this was a good the one. The funniest thing with the plurals is, yeah, like that was, you know, that was a running gag for a while. It was like the plurals where they didn't belong. Astroneers is a big one. Mm -hmm. um, and by daylights. Mm -hmm. But now that Fall Guys <laughs> like is that out. One. <laughs> fall Guys. She can't. Plural. Now that fall, that's the name of the game. She can't not say Fall Guy. She keeps yeah. making it singular. Like it's shocking mm -hmm. to me. It's like that one is a is a plural that's out there now. But now it's Fall Guy. Man, at least sounds like a Pokemon. Uh, it's true. It could be a Pokemon. Probably is. So we've got Jeremy, Jack, John, and James. It's true. Hey, we do. J squad. J's. Well, J's. The world's gonna explode. We need to fix that real quick. The J crew. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, uh, I got this. I uh, I, I found a place that has recorder league. Yeah, in uh, in a local place, and so I've been drinking the hell out of this stuff. It's so good. It is so really good. If you tasty. like ciders. Record it's super sweet. Sp but it's man, cider? it's good. Cider, yeah. I went digging through my fridge before this because I was like, I don't think I have anything, and I found a Blue Moon, which I'm drinking now, <laughs> and I can tell is not new. <laughs> it's an old one and a raspberry a white moon. claw <laughs> that's what Ugh, i that's what those I two out. flavors just being mixed together <laughs> so, something about blue moon in a can it's just not as good as when it's in either in a pint glass or in a bottle same like I mean, recorder league i love recorder league but in a glass is so like in a glass bottle it's well, so much better oh uh, well i was gonna say in a when you say in a glass you think from on tap which anything's to be better from yeah. on tap so good Really? Uh, I'm drinking H-E-B brand caffeine-free Diet Coke, so... Oh. Be, be careful with that. Don't even call it. Free. No, no, no. Why? You say Diet Cola. No, it does yeah. say. It actually, it says, actually, it's Diet Caffeine-Free Original Cola. Yeah, you can't say That's, Diet ooh. Coke. Well, Coke so, yeah, I thing. couldn't claim yeah. I was drinking Dr. Pepper when I was slamming Dr. Thunder back in, right. in college. <laughs> Dr. Thunder. <laughs> That's Dr. what it was. That's what it was. I believe it's like the Walmart slamming brand Dr. Dr. Pepper. Dr. Thunder. Slamming Dr. Thunder. <laughs> I was I was Ryan jacked up on time. the Doctor Thunder. Isn't there like Doctor? I was riding the Isn't Thunder a... bus. There's there's a ton of them. Like okay, hang on, let's see. I think Doctor Pip is a, one. Uh, Doctor. Oh, uh, Mister Doctor Pib Pib? Is one. Mister Pib. It's Mister Pib. He didn't go to doctor oh. school yet. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, Doctor Pepper Imposters. Mm -hmm. Here's the list. Oh my God. There's. 
hundreds how, of let's them. see how many are doctors or other or dentists oh, or something they're all doctor but here's here's the question <laughs> do, 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 you, do you know that dr pepper doesn't have a period after doctor it's just dr right so it's just dur pepper yeah, dur, dur pepper, pepper. <laughs> <laughs> uh we've got German. let's see here i mean dur i pepper. could go down the list I'll, I'll pick a few here's dr big which is interesting nice. dr like bruno him. dr browns dr dr Flag. bruno Nice. I like Dr. Dr. Bruno. Fago. Wait, oh, man. Doc Brown made a, a Dr. Pepper knockoff? Was that after so. or before the time machine? You can get a can or a 20 ounce of Dr. Brown's. Wait, I know Fago is its own thing. Like, Fago yeah, is Fago, a soda, like a cola. Yeah, that's, that's what the ICP guys drink, right? Uh, it is, Dr. Murphy's. Right. <laughs> Dr. Wait, is Perky. That legit. That's Dr. legit. Dr. Perky? Yep. Yeah. Dr. Perky oh, man, sounds right. like someone's nickname for their dick. Dr. S- Dr. Dr. Sparkle. Perky's definitely going to diddle you. There's no question. Yeah, Dr. Perky Lo- got his license taken away. Or- <laughs> uh, Lowe's Foods brand. They have a can and a two liter in North Carolina and Virginia. Dr. Look Sparkle. There we go. There's a whole bunch above me. Yeah. There's Dr. Thunder. Top Dr. Row a on plus. The right. That's got to be the best Dr. one. Dr. Shaw. <laughs> I like the Dr. 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 Fine Soda. Dr. Spice. Dr. Spice. And just the doctor. I like that. <laughs> I like the doctor. <laughs> oh, that chill in the middle there. Is that H-E-B? I don't know because that looks super familiar. That that logo, mm-hmm. that's some so. large store makes that. Also, like Doctor Fine Soda. <laughs> no, it's doc, fine. Doctor B is H E. Doctor B is H uh, E B's. Okay, that's, that's the one. They have they have a knockoff called Doctor B. It's What's the one at bad. the top that just says? Who makes Bob? that chill one? Bob. Bob. Doctor Bob. Yeah, Doctor Bob. Yeah. Jack's oh, what's it? What, what's its slogan? There, it says like say wah. Let's see, Dr. Bob, there's there's five different versions. There's Topps brand, Dr. Bob, Southern Home, Giant brand, Food food Hold in Bilo. I'm guessing it's probably a gas station. So there's five different Dr. Bobs. We're getting into the Dr. You know, Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper is going through a shortage right now. Like, that's pretty scary. Uh, yeah, I saw that's pretty some scary. people talking about that on Twitter. What's going on with Dr. Pepper? Why is there a shortage? Too popular. I don't know. I don't know. Do, do you guys know there's a coin shortage happening on right now? Oh, wait. Like, do, do people think that Dr. Pepper helps with like coronavirus the way they thought that the... the yeah, it's, it's medicine. medicine. Okay. It does. Yeah, to some people, it tastes like medicine. You have two options. You have to inject it or rectally. That's it. <laughs> That's the only way it saves you from coronavirus. But have you guys seen that there's a coin shortage going on? So much so that like places are making stickers like like due to the coin shortage, the national coin shortage, we can't give you shit. Is it because no one wants them? Well, I mean, like, how are we running low on coins? Like, First are people off, just not pennies not using shouldn't them, be a I thing. I don't know why pennies should pennies, not be a thing. Pennies should not be a thing. Get rid of. Oh, them. you know why pennies still a thing? Big nickel. <laughs> and by big nickel, by big nickel, I mean they're mostly made out of nickel. Right, nickel not, suppliers. Not like nickel is the nickel yeah, is lobbying not for the them. coin. Like, like dimes not into them, but Mm-mm. you know. Okay, so big according to nickel. the Fed, business and bank closures associated with COVID nineteen pandemic have significantly disrupted the supply chain and normal circulation patterns for U.S. coins. While there is an adequate overall amount of coins in the economy, the slow pace of circulation has reduced available inventories in some areas of the country. Yeah, wait, does that, does like that mean me. that, that there's like a lot of like businesses that have just closed or not reopened and they're just sitting on a bunch of coins in their I business? Th- I think it's more that people aren't spending money right now. So the fewer people are buying stuff because fewer oh, people are going out we're, to purchase yeah, things. We're, we're spending we're money less in person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So so like per in-person transactions aren't happening. So more digital transactions are happening or like, you know, card. And so, yeah, so we're not like giving it. So we all we're just sitting on these coins that we have. Well, yeah, yeah not that, the filthiest but nobody things. wants to. That's fascinating. Nobody wants to handle physical money because no. everyone knows it's the most disgusting way to I, pay for something. It was awful you, pre-coronavirus. <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, people also, would reach this is down. Death. Here you go. You, you carry it. Look, no matter what, you're either carrying it next to your crotch or your asshole. Depending on where the pockets are. Yeah. You reach in that sweaty cesspit and you pull it out and plop it on the table. <laughs> well, then, according keep, to that keep logic, that Ryan, whenever you get Ryan's signature. No, but <laughs> yeah. according to that logic, that's where your phone sits, too. And you put that right by your head. Right. I don't there, rub that on other people's face, though. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like, do you rub coins germs, in people's whatever. faces? Sometimes yeah. no. if I want to show how rich I am. Ass pennies. So just look at, shove look at these nickels. <laughs> <laughs> look at my hand. Well, this like, is almost $2. If you're like me too, any coins I've accrued over the past 
five years are in like a mug in my kitchen yeah. <laughs> right yeah. i'm just like i don't want that in my pocket and in the in the mug <laughs> yep <Got 'em>. mine, <laughs> mine are in a ceramic dish that i made in college there it is along with a some kind of usb bluetooth device oh nice. this one's not even from this country Ooh. oh yeah that'll happen too i'll go That's well i'll never spend you from australia i feel like everyone oh. has had that thought too of when they first get a coin from another country that they know they can't spend here anymore they go you know what i'm gonna put this away and there'll be like souvenir. a collection of like a souvenir like i'll have all my coins from other country, and then no one cares and no one does anything with it like they go look this coins from australia and people go why are you talking to me like i don't your kid, care about your this. kids like it i'll say right. that kids yeah. kids so, think it's cool Ah, Emily okay. Weeks Emily Weeks in chat is said I just saw I didn't see their first line but she says or you shove it in your bra. I'm assuming she's talking about phone and not coins. Cuz that sure. might be a little <laughs> awkward. I keep that's all like my that, stuff on my bra. That's yeah. like the yeah. scenes in the Disney's Robin Hood where they're dropping all the money into their fake breasts <laughs> and then they're just filled with coins just <laughs> yeah. ching 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 ching. Yeah, sometimes you need your milkshake to jingle. There yeah. you go. <laughs> and it's like, oh, oh man, I wish I had another white claw right now and then I go, oh yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah, yeah. good also did that for a joke this is very cold and wet and, and, now, and now it's it's awful in there <laughs> and now you're lactating yeah mm. <laughs> oh good God. times and uh john and ryan how is your hair doing it's long. My hair why didn't you ask me? Of... Why aren't Why aren't you asking me? <laughs> well, my I, hair is out of goddamn control right now. I was able to. I, I had two fortunate things work in favor of my hair. One, I got it cut right before we all went into lockdown, and then when we were in a lull here, I have a friend who's a st my stylist, and so I went over to his place outside. We both masked up the entire time, and I got a haircut in the safest way possible. About three months in but now like you can even see like my roots are pretty long and so it's it's grown out but it's um uh, people who have been going this entire time without cutting their hair it's getting insane i assume that's you jack that'd be me hello how you doing yeah my hair <laughs> now like the longer portions of my hair i can almost put in my mouth which oh, i've don't never do that. been don't able do that. to do that before uh so. yeah mine's, mine's pretty fluffy too got quite a bit at this point <laughs> oh god <laughs> actually you know what i'm gonna Hey, I'm going to pop open my, my credit card statement. I want to find the last time I got a haircut. I, I can look it up. I can find when the last time I went guy. to birds was. See, uh, and I, I, yeah, that's like, it's one of those things I'll never relate to is the people being like, man, the, you, you see people that have like these cra like crazy long hair right now. And they're like, I just can't. Like, I don't want to cut my own hair. Cat's doing it. Her hair is like getting down to her stomach. And she's like, I really should cut some of this. I should, and, and I'm just like all right so cut it and she's like i can't cut my own hair like i don't know what i'm doing i'm like i guess i i just have never had this experience <laughs> it's just not like, part of that world <laughs> it's just gone <laughs> i'm like good enough all right, yeah me... chat saying right now gus's hair i think is the craziest uh, he because he has this like froey nature to his thick hair and so he, he, if he doesn't like do anything to tame it and he comes to like uh, uh, meetings for like RT with like just his, his big old uh, quaff, it's pretty insane. And Michaels has gotten out of control. Yeah. Too. Michaels. Oh, my God. I just pulled up some video this last week and it was startling. That was my reaction to seeing him. He's got the floof. He's got the he's got the fro that comes out, the curly fro. But uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Michael's hair just makes me sad for the days that he must have at least once as an electrician shorted himself out with something and gone. <laughs> and then that was and it never went back. <laughs> well, like I th I Bernie had that hair too. Bernie's hair like mm -hmm. kind of poofed up yeah. that way as well. Uh, seeing I, I, it's so funny. I remember asking eons ago, I think maybe like on an episode of On the Spot, I asked Michael, like, what happens when you grow out your beard? Like, because uh, Michael has always been someone who's kept it clean shaven. And now he's in he's he's that we've we've got that image now. It's quarantine has answered that question. <laughs> mm -hmm. What does he look like? Hey, this episode of Off Topic is brought to you by HBO Max. The summertime blockbuster has always been a staple for movies. After a long, hot day, it's great to just sit back, relax and enjoy some quality films. That's why HBO Max is right for you. They showcase a massive library with entertainment like Jojo Rabbit and Ford vs. Ferrari, brand new things, as well as classic films like Space Jam and Saving Private Ryan. HBO Max has so many films you'll never get bored. 
I just recently watched through Space Jam again. I know it's a really old film, but I love seeing it because they're talking about a sequel. So I'm like, hey, I want to go back and watch that first one and see what it's all about. And it's just as good as you remember it. A lot of things don't hold up. That one does. I also rewatched through Detective Pikachu because that's on there because I love seeing a live action Pokemon film and they did it right. Not a lot of films can say that. But uh, it's a great adaptation film, and it's a lot of fun. You can start streaming these titles and more by going to bit.ly slash HBOMAXOT, and you can sign up for a seven-day free trial. That's bit.ly slash HBOMAXOT to sign up for your free trial and get to enjoying some summertime movies. Reminder, bit.ly slash HBOMAXOT to get a seven-day free trial. Check it all out. Like I've, I've trimmed my beard down a couple of times, but my yeah. the hair, I'm not going to touch that. And it's just When's the last time you went beardless, like completely bereft? Extra Clean life? shaven would have been, would have been extra yeah. life. Yeah. And that would have, was like, what, six years ago, I guess, at this point? No, because I was here. Five, five years ago, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, that was, that was the last time I went clean shaven. Because remember, mm-hmm. we, we did that. And then we went from there to New York for the Cloudberry thing, Ryan. Uh-huh. Because, yeah, we went there. We we ate at that pizza place. That was freaking amazing. And then... Um, Which yeah. was just every pizza place we ate at, at in New That's York. That's true. Though they didn't all come with stories of... What was that guy's deal? He was oh. like, now I'm selling gold. And I used to be in an insurance. And... <laughs> Yeah, he was he like, he acted, like he acted like he acted like a homeless person, but he was like clean and dressed in a suit with a tie. And it's like, but he had the kind of like the the sort of homeless mannerisms where it's like, is this guy going to hurt me? Like, you couldn't really tell what was happening with him. I mean, he, he fully jumped in mid conversation as if he'd been a part of it for the entire thing. Like yeah. we were talking about whatever. And then he was like, yeah, I've had that same problem. But like, you're at a different table, man. Who are you? Yeah. And so that was very, very odd um that's new here. york for you i feel like that's pretty standard new york yeah Ty- tyler says five years ago it was this november will be five years ago so um yeah really? five years since i've had a clean shaven beard yeah i know right john i had that same thought i was like that feels like it was like two, two extra years ago, ago. Oh yeah <laughs> i thought the same thing i was like yeah it's probably two years ago so God, every, damn, now that blends together with all the the various uh quarantining going on in the world does that mean just like the weird folks that used to wander the streets of New York are the only ones wandering the streets of New York right now. <laughs> I mean, things must be wild. That sounds awesome. It'd be, it'd be cool. I'd like to see, like, I wish I could go around to some of the places that I know are always fucking packed and see what they look like right now. Like, cause in a way it'd be like, wow, that's cool. Like to see something like that. Like normally this is full of people, whatever, mm-hmm. and, but also it'd be like creepy. Like, yeah, Kat and I had that when we were driving downtown, like a, kind of recently i was you know it was like 6 p.m on a weekday or whatever we're driving going into the city for something and i was like this is odd like this should be flooded right now and it's just like yeah. very few people around just kind of like yeah, i do i'm, I'm that the nerd who watches disney vlogs constantly yep and uh, i've been watching people going to going through disney world and like like the first day they opened it up a guy was shooting a video in main street usa which is like right where the the opening of magic kingdom is and there was like maybe 20 people between him and the castle it was it was bonkers God. how empty it was and it's like at the same time i'm like that would be so awesome to be there and have no one there then at the same time I'm like but no i don't want to be there because that's a horrible idea right now like yeah. i don't want to at all go to a theme park so you know, i want to go to a theme park but i shouldn't you know yeah uh eons ago when we had our our <laughs> other second economic eons problems. ago it's the second one this podcast <laughs> <laughs> that's how time works yep. um yeah when we had the market crash from the housing thing and the economy went no no um and so no one had money uh i still had a season pass to disneyland at that time and that's also when california adventure the, the second park in california's uh, uh resort area opened up and it opened up pretty shittily didn't have like uh, very good attractions to superstar from- limo been on it been on it multiple times Woo. really oh, oh shit. yeah um but as i'm saying is that we had uh, me and my family had season passes, and so it, Disneyland was pretty empty during that time anyways because, again, no one had any money for going on vacations. So we go to Disneyland, but then in the event, if Disneyland ever got too busy, we didn't feel like lines, we'd go to California Adventure because no one was there, and you could walk around and do whatever you want, go on any ride as many times as you want, and it was just ghost town. So it was like the little the little hideaway spot that you go to, which wasn't good for them, which is why they switched the park all the way over into like all Disney IP now um, to get people to actually 
actually go to the stupid place. Meanwhile, the real California is more of a microbial adventure at the moment. <laughs> God. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. They're getting better, though. <laughs> hey, just go to Russia. Just go to Russia. Yeah, there you go. They, Dude, got, they, the got, vaccine, man. they got the Sputnik in your veins. You know? You the just, hydrochloroquine. I mean, it hasn't been tested, but they have it. No, and, and <laughs> they have it. There's, there's three different outcomes to this thing. Outcome one, it doesn't work at all or like turns people into zombies or some shit, right? Or frogs. Like, like it's a classic start to a zombie film. Yeah. Of like, you know, like we thought yeah. it would help and everyone's like, it's, it's literally the plot of I Am Legend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Like, so you got that. Um, the second possibility, which is annoying, is we go, yeah, screw that. We're not, you know, dealing with that. It hasn't been tested and stuff like that. Then we get the tested vaccine later on and we use it and we're like, yeah, we're good. And Russia's like, yeah, we've been good the whole time. Like, it worked perfectly. And it's just annoying. It's like, son of a bitch. Like, we, <laughs> we could have done that, it and we, we could have been them. fine. Well, like, we damn it. Didn't, <laughs> like, didn't the U.S. do a thing where, like, there was, like, an international coalition that's all working together on a vaccine? And the U.S. was like, well, we get it first or or nothing. Mm-hmm. And they were like, no, you're good. And so now we're literally on our own trying to make our own vaccine. Let's while like not just unilaterally say the U.S. said that. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's a lot of different people in control there. of the U.S., unfortunately. Right. <laughs> but... Yeah, it's um, uh, yeah, that's pretty sad and stupid. Very, very stupid. I, and yeah, I guess like when I said there were three different scenarios, like two or the the first one I said is two different scenarios. Either like everyone gets sick because we go, OK, well, we're also going to take that vaccine because fuck it, we're going to do it. And then the world goes bad if it's wrong or we say, no, we're not going to do it. And then Russia becomes the land of horrible creatures with eight arms and shit <laughs> like and I'm ready for any. I'm ready for, for any that. of these yeah, scenarios. I'm, I'm okay with the eight arm Russians. Let's do it. <laughs> God. The we have next some Rocky space movie between awesome. us and, and Russia. If they become eight arm monsters. There's a few other countries that are in a bad position before we have to really deal with it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, they can just walk over the land bridge to Alaska, right? <laughs> Climb <laughs> get, there get on their eight arms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man. Man, I've been... Does anyone else watch Veep on HBO? Yeah. Mm-mm. Or have you watched it before? Yeah. It's it's a fascinating show. I've talked about it before on podcasts and stuff, but it's it's this weird show where the whole idea is Julie Louise Dreyfus is she was the vice president to start the show. And it's like over the course of a few years, kind of her track as she tries to run for president. And then, you know what she does when she's not president and all, all this different stuff. And the thing about the show is she is one of the worst humans on the planet. Like she is <laughs> such a woman and she's surrounded by other garbage humans. Yeah. And. But for some reason, you, you just keep watching the show. Like, it's just <laughs> like, well, like she has this assistant, Gary, who's like like this little like like this Labrador retriever who just does everything for her and like bends over backwards for him. And she just treats him like crap the whole show. And it's just like, but he just keeps falling. It, I, I'm it's it, I don't know why I'm still watching it. because It's just so <laughs> it's funny. It's such it's, bad people. It's but. it's West Wing uh, style, fast paced writing, but with crass humor and more swearing than most rated R movies. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's, it's genuinely one of the funniest written shows on TV full stop. Yeah. It's got a great cast. Do you, John, did, did you recognize Amy on the show? Who that is? Do you know who that is? No, not to, for a prior production. What is she, what, what has she done? Uh, I know. I'm pretty sure you've seen this movie. Amy was the main character from my girl with Macaulay Culkin. Oh my God, she was! Oh, wow. oh yeah. God, yeah, you're right. I was, That's I was amazing. watching. I was like, I was trying to. I was like, who? I know that woman from somewhere, and I, I, <laughs> I looked up. I was like, oh my God, it's from from my girl. And so yeah, she's all grown up now. And another uh, genuinely yeah. fun and funny movie. Yes, yeah. it's yeah. so Absolutely. happy. Yeah, just a real, real happy time, my girl. Watch, watch it with your family. <laughs> Nothing but but laughs the whole way through. <laughs> Yep, oh god! Lots movie. of laughs and people losing their glasses. Oh, oh god! That scene. Ugh. And Jeremy, Jeremy has no idea what we're talking about it soon, right? No, none of this <laughs> resonates. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm assuming is it not a fun family movie? No, I don't know. it's a sad, <laughs> sad movie. Did you read the book Bridge to Terabithia? Did you see no. the movie? Okay. But anyway, Jeremy's camera's frozen, you guys. I think he's... I think he's <laughs> that's, uh, there's a movie as well? <laughs> I, I assume you went to school at some point. Because yeah, I'm pretty sure that, that was one. required reading for every no, year. No, it wasn't it required, wasn't required no, reading for me. Well, it was where, no? where the Red Fern Grows. You had, to, you had to read that. I didn't read point. that one. 
No? No, I did. I, the ones I remember. We definitely did <laughs> Beowulf. We did okay. Catcher on the Rye. No. Uh, I think we did To Kill a Mockingbird. Okay. Um, okay. And that's all. I I can, let me put this in terms of Beowulf then. Nice. Uh, imagine the story of Beowulf. Okay. If Beowulf made best friends with Grendel. Okay. And then they, 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 they've created a fantasy land across the river. Uh, and then one day while Beowulf wasn't there, Grendel drowned. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to watch this movie. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a fun movie. It's, it's definitely a they movie like, that oh, is there to make you feel Jack's sad. Like, they it's lost their glasses. And John's like, that scene. And I'm like, I like Velma from Scooby-Doo. She loses her glasses. <laughs> and then like, it's, oh, man. No, he was describing the plot to Birds of Ver to Der uh, the over Terabithia, That's which is similar to My Girl. There is no magical world in My Girl. Mm -mm. No, no, instead it's uh, instead of the river. Okay, now in terms of my girl, imagine if boy and girl become friends. Uh, boy loses glasses and gets stung to death by bees. <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> this is why I don't watch movies. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. If you're worried about it, they do in fact have a funeral scene where you do see the dead boy. It's just yeah, a yeah, real yeah. fun time. Yep. All right. Oh yeah, she she lives All in a right, funeral now. home. That was the thing, yeah, right? She lives in a funeral home. And Dan Aykroyd's in it. He's wacky, right? He was in it, wasn't he? <laughs> He's gone. Wasn't he nuts. the dad? Dan Aykroyd is, is gone. Not the dad? Nuts. Yeah, I it's been he... a long time. I'm, I'm Mice and sure Men was a good one. I did. I read that one too. I saw someone in the chat say that's another Mice friendly one. one. That's enough. That's Tell another fun one. That's another nice one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, things, <laughs> the things they carried. That's another happy story we read. That's a good one. A lot of it's, it's hard to keep track of what's still allowed to be taught in school. Right. It's a lot of like, happiness. What, what books joy. have not been banned? Because all of those classic books are full of awful things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's just some bad. of them are more awful than others. Yup. Yeah, they are. God. Well, Anna Chlumsky. Chlumsky. That's, that's the girl Veep. From, from Veep and, uh, and from My Girl. Wow. I, there was uh, a My Girl too. Yeah, there was. Yeah. I don't remember that one. I the, it's called the B strike back. <laughs> <laughs> it was Jerry Seinfeld's movie. B, B yeah. movie. <laughs> it's movie canonically too. part of my girl. Wow. Oh man. I got, I got I, on uh, the, uh, yeah, my, fuck it. My... Go ahead, John. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> no, nah, when I was, I was like looking at something and I was like, Hey, you know what? This is a bummer. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, go to John. Go to John. <laughs> no, I was just going to share. I, 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 uh, I've, I've been jonesing to watch one of my uh, uh, secret pleasure movies that I know is a total campy bad movie, but I've been wanting to watch it. And my girlfriend hasn't seen a lot of movies that, from the last like 20 years, so she kind of catches up with things with me. So we watched Underworld, the Kate Beckinsale uh, oh, okay. vampire movie. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I still stand by it. That movie is totally predictable and and such a uh, lazy script, but it is so fun and it is packed full of so many good actors. Because um, it's got Kate Beckinsale and Scott Speedman are the main you know love interest leads of it but then okay. like bill nye's in it and he's the he's the the head Great vampire actor. and he's an angry michael, vampire yeah he's an angry vampire michael sheen is in it he's the head mm -hmm. of the lichens the werewolves it's a good movie but it's totally campy and stupid are they really called the lichens because that means moss that is a fungus yeah lichen is a, <laughs> a mm. type yeah, of i don't know right? if it's spelled the same way but yeah they're called, the, they're called lichens hmm. i think but, but i guess but it's short for lycanthropy is, yeah, yeah like isn't like anthropy? Yeah. Yeah. They're just they're just yeah. shortening it. That's yeah, but, when you took something that sounded cool and made it shorter and turned it into moss. But you're <laughs> but the lichen for moss is L A C H E N, correct? Yeah. I don't think that changes how it's said. Yeah. Yeah, but lichen is L Y C A N for the werewolves mm -hmm. thing, I believe, just mm -hmm. to clarify. Uh, um, ah, all right. <laughs> That's yeah, true. so it sounds like they had amazing uh, supporting cast and forgot to cast better lead actors, is what you're saying? No, I actually love Kate. Be I'm saying that uh, Kate Beckinsale and Scott Speedman, if you want to find a movie that helped me learn to realize that I'm bisexual, it was those two beautiful people in the lead of that movie. But I remember Kate Beckinsale did okay. But Scott, yeah. what's his face, was kind of just like, 
confused and bored through most of it as i remember <laughs> but he's the, maybe i'm misremembering his performance he's the he's the character they have to explain the whole world to because he's the 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 i can't remember what you call it, the trope mm-hmm. but the 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 person yeah, in, every a, man. in a new land yeah and um i love scott speedman but my, uh, my girlfriend noticed him from um he was in felicity um mm. but i like him has, has he done anything else i, I can't not a lot think of another He's got a pretty uh, dispatchy career, which I, I was explaining to her. I was like, I remember when seeing Underworld, I was like, oh, I can't wait to see these two lead actors that I really like have successful roles in movies for years to come. And then he didn't really make anything. And even Kate Beckinsale's had a patchy uh, career um, since then. Well, since she this, had uh, two more Underworld movies, right? <laughs> there was there one of those. Oh, she, has, she was in three more. Oh, man. Wow. But there were five total. Who was in the other ones? Well, they did. They did Underworld, Underworld Evolution, which were the the first and then the sequel, and she and her and Scott were both in it. And then they did the prequel, which was was Rise of the Lycans or something like that. Okay. The Wake the Waking something like that. Underworld Awakenings. I don't remember. Um, and then they did two more really bad, just Underworld canonical ones starring her. Well, that's like like Starship Troopers. There's like seven Starship Troopers movies. Oh God. Yeah, there are. and if if not for oh, the yeah. sequels, there's also the fact that the props from Starship Troopers show up in everything for the next twenty years of sci-fi <laughs> movies. That is true. That armor and guns, especially the helmet, everywhere. Yeah, I, th- I think it was like in the- fucking Power Rangers. Oh yeah, yeah. Huh. The I think the fourth one brought back Casper Van Dien. I was so, going to ask how many were he in. Yeah. He, uh, how many he, were he in? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, he was in. I, I want to say the third or fourth one. They brought him back. Rico's Roughnecks. Whoa. Um, but yeah, that's that was another one. I was like, oh, okay. That, that was okay. weird because they had like you know they start like the movie starts and they're all in high school. It's like they all get recruited from high school to join mm-hmm. the, the the space force, mm-hmm. and um, but then they're they look the exact same. So it's like all like you know late thirties yeah. people in high school. It's like Denise Richards. Not in high school. <laughs> like that's well, very odd. That's hard to do though, because they you had to balance it against the fact that they would then follow them through their careers and then Rico becomes the colonel. I don't know, whatever the leader of the regiment is. Yeah. He already you can't buy it because he still looks like he's twelve year old trying to do the welcome to Rico Roughnecks. Hoo It's just not <laughs> it's not yeah. good. I mean, I love the movie. It's an incredible uh sci fi movie. Honestly, it's one it's of a the great rare... commentary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. One of the rare like original IPs you see in that field. That was uh, a book too, right? Yeah, by uh, Heinlein, mm. uh, who is a, a very interesting writer. Though he, if you read Heinlein, you're going to spend a lot of time hearing about the large, full breasts of the female protagonist. Which, to his credit, he <laughs> right, I'm has... back in the conversation. I'm back in. <laughs> I was <laughs> out, and now I'm in. He has a lot of strong female protagonists, but they always have, they're built like a brick shit house every time, <laughs> which is a saying that means good things, I guess, but I don't know why. <laughs> they're always like nine foot tall Amazonians with huge knockers that love sex. Snoo snoo. And, uh, snoo, snoo. That is, yes, they're all snoo snoos. That Got is it. just Heinlein across the board. But I mean, he's written some great books like The Cat Who Walks Through Walls is a really good book. Uh, the original Starship Troopers book is nothing whatsoever like the movie. Hmm. Uh, they're like, mo- they're literally, it's weird because they they carried over mobile entry, infantry, but in the movie, they're just on foot running around. In the book, they're called that because they're in like powered armor suits jumping around all over the place. Hmm. I guess they probably changed that for either for budgetary reasons, often reason why you like dumb down stuff like that. I mean, they, it's only loosely based on the book anyway. It's well, a, a There's no high was... school scene in the book. I mean, all of that is just like, whatever. This episode of Off Topic is brought to you by Honey. Look, we all shop online and we all do it a lot. And we've seen that promo code field that pops up at checkout. You know, it's just there taunting us like, put in your code. And we don't know the code. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. That's because Honey is a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 online stores that range from popular tech brands to gaming to fashion and even food delivery. Here's how it works. Imagine you're shopping at one of your favorite sites. Then you go to checkout 
and the honey drop down pops up and all you have to do is click apply coupons wait a few seconds as honey searches for coupons it can apply in working coupons and you'll watch as the prices drop uh, i've been doing a lot more cooking recently in my own kitchen because you know i'm stuck at home i might as well do that there's a lot of appliances there's a lot of uh different things I need that I never thought about needing before. So I go on Amazon, I look for these little options here and there, and that pop down pops up and it's like, hey, see if you can get this for a better price, see what coupons we can put in. And uh, it saves you money all the time. You know, it's little bits here and there that really, really add up over time. If you don't already have honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and it installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you're doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. You can get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash off topic. That's joinhoney.com slash off topic. Install it and start saving money today. Thanks, Honey. A movie that was like, blew my mind how much it was, I don't know, loosely, but took a lot of creative liberties was Jurassic Park. Yeah. The original Crichton yeah. book was quite different. But that, that being said, I think Jurassic Park, the movie, it, I mean, it, it's so well done. Like, it's such a good story. I, I recently rewatched it with Katie. And the one thing that kind of bugs the shit out of me about that movie is we can talk about this one because it hasn't been out for, you know, however many years, 25 years. Um, You've already spoiled my girl. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, um, thanks. Well, my girl's 91, guys. so that's 29 years. <laughs> um, at the end, when when Grant and the kids make it back to the visitor center, so mm -hmm. Lex and Tim and Grant make it back to the visitor center. And then like Grant's like, oh, there's food. And he's like, I'll be right back. And just leaves the kids. Like after all of that time, he leaves, he goes outside and finds Ellie who's, who's running with her legs all messed up from the, the Velociraptor attack. But he just ditches them. Like just pieces out the kids. And then in it's an, like in an unsecured building. Yeah. He thought they were safe. Come on. But still, it's he's like not, you, he's not a with, dad. He doesn't know what he's doing. He traversed an entire island full of monsters with these kids. You gave one <laughs> mouth to mouth, like saved them all. And then he's like, all right, you're at a table eating ice cream. I'm going to go. Bye. He does, like he spends in the both in the I think in the book and in the movie, he spends quite a bit of time saying how uncomfortable children make him. So I don't know. Yeah. Maybe he was just begging for someone else to babysit. But that's for a while. part of his character arc yeah. in the movie, though, is that yeah. he 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 kind of comes around to that but i think i think a good film adaptation should take i'm saying that jurassic park was very different from the book and i was surprised because i read the book after seeing the movie yeah but i think if they can improve upon it or make it you know work better for the film then they should a good example was v for vendetta people loved the movie with hugo weaving but the in the original comic he's full-on like terrorist anarchist like not a charismatic likable character but they wanted to make him more shakespearean and and charismatic in the movie and i think it worked hmm. yeah i still haven't seen that movie people talk about it all the time but i just missed it when it came out and never circled I, back around to it i remember it being okay like i remember being blown away by it like people lost their minds for it but yeah it There's certainly a brought guy fox day back yeah. or i mean to <laughs> awareness of the u.s i don't think anybody talked about it all that much until that and then someone, the masks were everywhere i know it's big in, chat, in the uk someone in chat is saying jurassic park was being filmed the same time the novel is being written i don't think that's true that's two jurassic park two no no jurassic I park think, lost, no, lost world i mean lost world follows the the canon of the movie is where lost world the book picks up because in the, the original jurassic park book malcolm dies uh hammond dies like a whole bunch of people die mm -hmm. And like only a few people make it out alive. And then the second book starts off with like Ian Malkin's point of view going like, oh, yeah, my, my reports of my death are greatly over exaggerated. It's like, no, you were very clearly dead in the yeah. first book. And then it was kind of like, oh, we're going to forget that. So literally, like the second book was written like a script. Like it is very much. It's a lot like the Michael Crichton. The big thing about him was he was great about using a lot of science in his books, like actual science mm -hmm. in his books and making them really like intricate and detailed. The second, the Lost World book is is a movie script. Is all it is. Like it's it's very dumbed down. It's like eh, okay. But. It was pretty disappointing to read. As someone yeah. that at the time had read a lot of Crichton, I like after Jurassic Park. Uh, you pick up I, Sphere, Andromeda Strain. Yeah, and I worked through a library. lot of his books, and then that one was just like, okay, well, this feel, feels a bit like a cash grab. I, I get why you did it. <laughs> you know, I, I get it. I get it, Michael Crichton. Yeah, it's hard not to make a sequel to a movie that made 
well for its time was one of the highest grossing movies of ever yeah before you know avatar and titanic came out way to ruin it james cameron <laughs> uh ryan have you read max brooks's new book yet de-evolution mm -mm. i haven't i picked it up i haven't read through it yet john are you a fan of max brooks i'm guessing you seem like uh, a max brooks no kind of guy. actually what 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 was he what has he written world war z know? world war oh, z is okay i read okay, that and that's that's only that. one of his i've read <laughs> you've read that hey Jerry. i read that i read world war z yes <laughs> <laughs> yay yeah. the so speaking of speaking of, of book versus movie adaptation, that one is the book is light years better than the movie. Although the movie's not yes. a bad movie, but it's not World War Z. It's an entirely mm -hmm. different story with some loose connections to the book World War Z. But right, even like, like in the book, they were slow, right? Yeah, weren't they like they were the slow, slow zombies? Yeah, and they were slow, and also the the book takes place after the the zombie war happened. Like the whole book yeah. is a recount of everything that happened, and like the narrator or the the author is a guy going from place to place writing down stories. Whereas the movie is like this one guy, Brad Pitt, happens to be at every major event on Actually, the planet. I, you yeah. know, I brought up when we were talking about books we read in school and stuff like that. I brought up the things they carried. World War Z is very similar to that in that like there's a lot of different stories that all kind of relate to each other. Like in the grand mm -hmm. scheme, they're all the same, but like it's like different retellings of different things. So like the structure is very similar. And like yeah. World War Z, yeah, it just has all the different little pieces in there. I remember well, I, the I pilot see. one was like my favorite one in the snow. Oh, she, she's great. Oh, well, I, so I thought good. you were talking about the, the, the helicopter pilot in Louisiana. Oh, no, no, no. no. The one thinking. in the snow. The one that, like they're where the zombies are all cold and oh, like they're, so they're going. Actually, yeah, yeah. The frozen one. Yeah. So awesome. Now, now, see that like my thing is like, I've, I've said this multiple times, but I want to see HBO take World War Z and make a mini series out of it, like Band of Brothers or something where you tell all those individual stories and be like, here, like hand a, hand a, an episode off. Be like, you know, like. I don't know, uh, like Eli Roth, you do this one episode and you know, like, like, you know, everyone kind of take one and do different takes on these stories within this greater world. I think that would be really cool. Do you but, think uh, maybe the success around that time of uh, Walking Dead kind of put them off of doing that more serialized story just because they didn't want to be making essentially the same thing? Not essentially maybe. the same thing. It's very different, but that's in that same vein where it's another like, here's a bunch of stories of during the zombie outbreak it yeah. feels thematically similar i mean that, that makes sense and i guess now the walking dead is kind of wind wound down like i could i could see you know brad pitt owns the rights to world war z so i could see him maybe approaching and be like hey i have this thing we never made a sequel to the movie or let's might as well take it and do something with it but that's like the new anyway. thing to do though it's like those tv miniseries like i know a lot of those are on their way out like fallout has one uh coming out on Amazon good Prime Omens was a good one. Oh yeah, Good, good Omens yeah. was a was a mini series. It was very good, mm -hmm. dude. Uh, the Boys like season two is coming out pretty soon. Oh, I'm excited about that. Sean Ashmore that's, is in it, man. Sean, that's Ice a man. adaptation what? that uh, I think did what? better than the book. Uh, Lamplighter is is uh, Sean Ashmore, so he's popping up. Interesting. In two. Okay. Yeah. I mean, bloody it's like relentlessly bloody and and violent and every character in it is in some way flawed and awful but that's just kind of the times we're living in so uh, what's what's her name not sunspot what's what's the 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 main fe the new female who joins starfire oh, under clap no, or something? starfire's teen titans <laughs> i know but i heard sunspot and i was like that seems similar she's so she's the I'd closest she's the closest to like genuinely good i would say on the show the, wait, the oh, you're talking about the one from the season one because the there's a one. new yeah. female protagonist. No, 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 no. that's uh, that's Stormfront. No, not Stormfront. Her. That's it. I'm yeah. talking no the uh, the girl from the first. I'm, I'm looking mm -hmm. to see if chat picks up on it, but anyway, uh, she seems like she was like the most genuine, like nice. She goes in very naive. It's like oh okay, and then mm -hmm. kind of deals with it, and then it's like I, I like her, I liked her arc throughout the season. Starlight, Starlight. Starlight. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you, Tyler. So. There you go. Anyway, that's a good show. New season's coming out in September, early September. Dude, speaking of uh, of, of of cool stuff, uh, the, the DC fandom's coming out like in two weeks. Mm -hmm. We're going to see a trailer for uh, the new Justice League or, or the recut of Justice League. The Zack Snyder cut of Justice League. The butthole Zack cut Snyder's of cats. Justice League. <laughs> the butthole cut? What? Yeah, the butthole cut of cats. Gotcha. All right, come on, what, man. What was, I, people keep throwing that around. Was there a cut? Did they cut no, some buttholes? What no, happened? No. A, no. We cutting buttholes? I got a knife. Let's go. Oh, Jesus. 
That's dude, horrible. Dude, a cut on your butthole. Oh, oh man. Someone what did that. Awful. Someone edited the trailer to have buttholes in it, though, if you really, really want to. Oh, really? I haven't seen I don't. Oh, hang on. And then they added nipples, <laughs> too, didn't they? Hang on. I don't know about nipples. There's definitely buttholes. Lots of nipples. nipples. Lots of Jack, that's, buttholes. that's just, that's too far. All right. Anyway. But the buttholes. Hang on. Cats trailer. <laughs> buttholes. <laughs> I'm, Cats, I'm excited. Butthole about... cut. There you go. I'm excited about the DC fandom thing more than anything for the Suicide Squad uh, game, the new Rocksteady game. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just want to find Rocks out more about that. Oh, Jeremy. <laughs> oh, Jeremy. What have you oh, done? He's, he's oh, seeing the buttholes. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's better, the cat's butthole cut or the Harry Potter gun cut? The butthole cut. Dude. The, okay. <laughs> the, gun cut, the gun cut starts funny and then it gets dark it very gets dark. quickly you can't think about it too much you can't think about it too much you just gotta right. just you just look at it for what it is and if the yeah. moment if you have a moment where school shooting crosses your brain you're out it's over you are no longer enjoying it yeah all i saw of the gun cut was just the, <sighs> the cut of uh, dumbledore shooting the lights out on that's on the cute part that's where it starts yeah. funny. Drive. okay that's all i've <laughs> yeah, seen that- that's the best part of it, and then it gets dark. <laughs> it yeah, gets I, did, I guess I didn't dark. think that all the way through of going to the end <laughs> of the movie. Yep. Yeah. The butthole trailer is pretty funny. I would recommend it. Is... it. It's funny to me because it's what the hell is it? did they replace the moon with a butthole? I think they did. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. Um, it's pretty funny because it's very clearly like a PNG that <laughs> that's like sliding along with them. <laughs> like, <laughs> And it's like blatantly obvious. Like there are cats that have very dark fur. And it's just like this pink like circle. Yeah. I mean, you have cats. You know how that works. All right. I mean, yeah, I got cats. I had to let one out a little bit ago. She's like looking at the door like four lines. She's like, please let me out. And now I, that uh... one's next to his toy, hoping that someone will come play with him. But <laughs> I'm busy. Cat's busy. It won't happen. Oh, poor Bubba's. Sorry. Sorry, Zip. This episode of Off Topic is brought to you by Stamps.com. One of the toughest parts of making and selling products online is the shipping. It's really just a big hassle. That's why thousands of small business owners have discovered the benefits of Stamps.com in recent months. They've been able to keep their businesses running and avoid the crowds all from their own computers. With Stamps.com, you can print on-demand postage, avoid going to the post office, and save money with discounted rates. Stamps.com brings all the mailing and shipping services you need right to your computer in the comfort of your home or office. Whether you're a small business sending invoices or an online seller shipping out products or just working from home and need to mail stuff, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. Simply use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. Once your mail is ready, just leave it for your mail carrier, schedule a pickup, or drop it in a mailbox. It's that simple. And like I said, with Stamps.com, you get great discounts too. Five cents off every stamp and up to 62% off USPSs and UPS shipping rates. It's a no-brainer, saving you time and money, which are both very, very important. Right now, our listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage, and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Off Topic. That's Stamps.com, and enter Off Topic by clicking on that little microphone at the top of the page. Thank you very much, Stamps.com. Anyway, John, how have you been keeping yourself busy? Jesus, um, slowly converting my entire living room into a gym um, nice. because I can't go anywhere and I have limited space because I'm in a tiny two bedroom apartment. So since I'm not having anybody over at my house, why do I need a living room to entertain people? So <laughs> I've just been slowly adding gym equipment that I'm able to buy. The latest thing I got was I got a full pull up stand, like those like self standing pull up things with like a, a dip bar on it. Um, oh, the, uh, the, the, the prison workout yeah basically and i just i'll I'll say this uh i really like working out while i watch better call saul i mean that's better than the gym so (laughs) um but yeah it's too hot outside to go out even for walks now austin's like the service of the sun right now so staying indoors working out and reading a shit ton of comics that's basically what fills my time all right now are you wiping them down when they arrive at your house that's important Wiping down my my gym uh, setup. No, the comics. Oh, 
Shit. <laughs> You better Look, stay you need to wipe down your John. gym stuff in your house. It's over. It's fine. It's the just next person to use that equipment is going to thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's like the nice thing to do, you know? Nice. But, uh, Good to have it yeah, have. Doing uh, the, the, the fun thing I do with my kids, our favorite activity is go for a drive. We don't mm. go anywhere because there's nowhere to go. So we just drive around <laughs> and then come home. <laughs> nice. You just Jeremy, do what we you, do. Yeah. yeah, Jeremy, you go to Waco like every sure weekend, do. right? Sure do. Not every weekend. Every other weekend. Uh, <laughs> Pretty much. There you go. Yeah. And then we come back and we give you chips and salsa and, and, and queso. queso. And then that's good. <laughs> we head out. <laughs> do you just have a do you just have a dead drop that you leave that stuff for Jack? Yes. Yes. <laughs> he just well, throws it at our front door. <laughs> yeah. I well, we come back home. And like we don't swing by their house on the way home. We come back home. I come inside and start eating. And I go, hey, Kat, why don't you bring that over to Jackson? And then she drives over and leaves it out front. <laughs> and I go, all right, well done. Now, I'm, I'm taking next for you. Yep. I'm taking next week off. Um, like taking nice. a little break before we get back into keeping the lights on, which kicks off in like two weeks, I think. Um, keeping the lights on. Did I say keeping the lights off? Keep, keeping the lights on. Yeah, keep the lights <laughs> off. Yeah, sh shut them down. <laughs> There's no coming and, uh, back Katie for you. And Katie's like, she's like two weeks away from starting back up at UT, like all online stuff. Nice. And so I think we, we might just take, like take a day trip to Dallas where we just drive to Dallas and like two of our friends up there, they just had a kid. And so we're just gonna like drive up like to the, like in front of their house and just like wave at them and drive <laughs> off just to, just to do something just to, like you see the world. Cause it's been so long. So yeah, we actually, we, one of the Eli's friends had a drive by birthday party. Not that long ago where yeah. that was the whole thing was the, the entire event was a bunch, a line of cars drove by his house, just waving. We made the sign for them to hold up. You take no. the present. You just, Huck, just kind of huck it out the window. <laughs> and hope my, they my dad they intercepted had a, on the way in with like a cloud of spray Lysol. <laughs> my dad had a similar thing. He retired this year and he's a, he's a pastor. And so him and my mom just sat in chairs in front of the church. And then there was just a processional of cars that just drove by to like wish him well as retirement and they drive off. Nice. He said it was yeah. great because it, it didn't it, it didn't uh, give people opportunity to like uh, stay too long and 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 you know <laughs> chat for forever. So kind of yeah. like get in, get out, get done. Is that something we can keep up for like once once all this COVID stuff is done? Be like, oh, hey, oh, I'm I having a birthday that. drive by. Be like, all right, throw a present, wave, and just drive off. That. Like, <laughs> oh, all right. Well, what as else a, am I going to do with my Saturday? As a parent who really does not like kids' birthday parties, I am all for that. Yeah, there you go. Say hi. Okay. It's like they have, have a birthday tour, every yeah, year done. too. It's really frustrating, and well, it's expensive too. Yeah, those pl those birthday places aren't cheap if you let them go somewhere public. And if you yeah. happen to have a house that's just full of you know various mess like mine is with no pool, you got to go somewhere. <laughs> yeah. What What is the line? Uh, I guess Jeremy, since you don't have kids, what is the line where you stop buying presents for each other, like you you and your wife? Like like is there is there a year you think like all right, we're done buying things for Kat each other I, for like cat and i do not buy anything for each other like really like christmas birthdays valentine's day we don't like we wow. because like basically it, it's gotten to the point now where it's like if we want something we'll get it yeah and then like you know randomly like you know not nowadays because i don't go out very much but randomly like i'd be at heb like you know getting food for dinner and stuff like that and I'd be like you know what? I'm going to pick cats some flowers. Like I'm going to, I'm going to get her some flowers and bring them home or like a card or something like that. And like, you know, randomly we'll do that. But when it comes to Christmas, we're like, listen, we could spend money on each other and buy things that we don't give a shit about. <laughs> right. And that will sit over there. Like, or we could just not spend the money and like hang out together instead, go get a beer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like go, yeah. go like sit at a bar together and have a date night and like do that instead. So that's what we do usually. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what we do for like Christmas. I'll be like, you know, like I'll buy you, I'll get her maybe one or two small things, but it's like, oh, then we'll save this money and go to Europe or something. Mm -hmm. or, or next time we go on a trip, we'll spend that money then, you know, like, yeah. all right, then then like having a pint while in, you know, at a pub somewhere in, in London, be like, ha you know, Merry Christmas. And so anyway, well, once you hit a certain age uh, slash amount of splashable income, it's just like, yeah, you could give me something, but that's one more thing I have to take care of. So if you could not, that would be the present. <laughs> you could not. If you could just not. <laughs> just, you know, 
my, my present is that whatever it was that you had you were about to give me i don't have to find a place for it to live and i can just uh i can just be happy that there's less things in the house than there would have been there you go yeah. i do so but i do bake her a lot of things she she oh. eats she eats good there you go that's good <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what i'm yeah. around for there you go. You're going to get this uh, tonight. I saw Stanford, uh, Bell. Uh, Stanford just announced <laughs> they're not going to have students on campus next in the fall. <laughs> Jack just goes, but I, Bell. What's the bell, <laughs> What's the bell mean? Bell, bell means we means... think first members. Yeah. Right? So uh, I want to thank everyone who has signed up for first. And to remind people, if you haven't, sign up for first. You can support us. You can watch exclusive content. Hardcore mini golf, the entire season's out now. So you can sign up for first and just binge watch the entire season. Uh, and this is, uh, this is our moment. Yeah, John, you haven't been here for this. It's, it's, it's our moment to, to really thank our first members for supporting us. Um, and it, it gives us a chance to make more content like hardcore mini golf and make more of that, like really high level content that we have a lot of fun doing. And, uh, we're happy that you guys get to watch it. You can also watch, you can also watch Haunter, which I love Haunter. We all love Haunter. Yeah. We want to make more uh. Haunter. Uh, and if enough of you sign up for first, we can make more Haunter. That's not true. But it'd be awesome. Who knows? But it'd be, Could ba- be true. It'd be bad might ass. be true. It might be we true. We make no promises, enough, but it might be. Yeah. If, if a fuck ton of you do, then it might be <laughs> true. Um, also, there is some new merch that uh, I can bring up. And I really, really like oh, yeah. a That's lot of this cool merch. Um, so but that spell check shirt we had, it was like on that reddish colored t-shirt. That's the coming back shirt. out. The Achive shirt, uh, which is kind of an inside joke. That's coming back <laughs> out in like a green Q right there. I love that coat of arms shirt right there. That's it's yeah. very Celtic in its appearance, and I love that very much. Um, so yeah, that's the achievement hunter shirt. And then that design also comes on a Stein. That is our switch case. We have an achievement we hunter a switch, switch case. case. Oh wow, that's out, which is awesome. Look at that. Matt Bragg was like all over that thing. Doesn't <laughs> come with a switch. It uh, does not come with a switch. You got to buy your own switch. But uh, once you do. Uh, you can put it in that. This is our new coloring book pages are coming out right now. We got the post team coloring book page out there. Those are those are for free on our social stuff, right? I think. I believe so, but uh, that is yeah. by Gail Fox. Um, so oh, she, she does some amazing one. art. Yeah, and uh, so we got a bunch of different. We got Fiona. We got Alfredo. We got the uh, the girls of Achievement Hunter. There it is. The ladies of Achievement Hunter. That they all are. Uh, so great new stuff. And uh, I don't know if we have a picture of it, but we got the Stein as well, which I fucking love. Stein, the Stein. Stein has been delayed, right? I think that's the thing. Oh, it's not out. Yeah. dang it. But when it comes out, it's got it that coat of arms on it. it Apparently people have awesome. found it in the store. It's not available yet or that it says it's sold out in the store. It actually hasn't come out yet. So yeah. But it's You're going to want to get that when it comes out. It's really cool. Uh, I highly recommend Because you know what? Then you can fill it up with your favorite beer and you can pretend you're at a bar. Right? That's, that's what I do. Uh, that's well, what I try to do. <laughs> you know what else, Jeremy? Maybe things uh, back to normal. Speaking of, of first members and people supporting us and us loving the community, tomorrow night, if you're watching this live or oh. Friday night, uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, the 14th of August, 10 p.m. Central, here on RTTV, only on RTTV, I'm going to be doing DJ Jonk again. So I'm going to hey. be playing some music for an hour-ish or so over on RTTV, uh, playing some music, having a good time, just hanging out in chat. And uh, hopefully you guys will join me. It should be fun. And I got to I gotta figure out my set list. So it should be I'm good. I'm sad you spoiled the mystery of DJ Jonk. I like just thinking it was an, an some anonymous person that I would never be able to be lucky enough to meet. <laughs> yes. And, uh, I have uh, the head. I have the DJ Jonk head uh, somewhere around here. But the problem is I can't <laughs> like, I can't wear it. I can't, I can't see out of it. I can put it on, but then it's just like, all right, I've just got a, a light box on my head. But I so like during the show, I usually have it like off to the side, kind of like light up, lit up, and you know make. Oh, I can I can wire that up with a screen in there if you want to be able to see out of it. It'll be well, it's it's awful. literally like right here. It's like on my face. <laughs> like I I can't see anything out of it. It's because I got a big ass head, and so uh, yeah. <laughs> there it is. That's the picture. Yeah, there you go. There's, there's <laughs> that's that's the uh, the version. I I now have uh, like a thin uh sheet of like frosted plexiglass in front of it, so it makes those squares look really really. They pop. They look good, and so um. Yeah. So anyway, Very DJ Jonk cool. tomorrow night, and also not only that, we have a DJ Jonk shirt that'll be available tomorrow during the set. You can pick up print on demand. So uh, grab that as well. I want to see people wearing DJ Jonk shirts. It's it's actually a really cool design. Be a very so. limited time shirt. So yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. So anyway, get that. Shit. Do that tomorrow. That's enough self promotion. Looks like you're wearing one of the boxes from Mario Kart in your head. 
It does kind of like, dude, you Maybe, can make yeah. it a question yeah. block, dude. Get the question. Well, like, because they're like, they're like they rainbow, gold, you know, colorful question blocks. It looks yeah. almost like that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an eight by eight grid of, of LED. So I can change any color. So basically I have, you know, eight by eight. So eight, or eight times four is that 16, th whatever. Four, Six, four. 32. There, it's 32 by eight. No, it's, it's like a giant thing, right? 64. 16, well, I mean, eight by eight is sixty-four lights per thing, but the whole thing—if you fold, if you unfolded it, anyway, whatever. Who cares? Math. <laughs> anyway. Make a question mark. Make a question mark. <laughs> so, I figured out if you can if you can make some eight by eight uh, pixel art for me, feel free to send it to uh, you know eight by DJ, eight somewhere. DJ Junk, <laughs> Caleb at two hundred dot com. Just send it into the uh, internet. Tweet, 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 tweet it at me. It. We'll find it. Send it. <laughs> uh, tweet, tweet it at me. I'll see what I can do. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Steffi says coloring pages are coming out tomorrow on social 2 30 p.m. Central. There you go. So there you go. So you can get, grab those. Get a color, color in and send us uh, your versions. There you go. Yeah. Because you can just pick those up. You could color them digitally if you so like. True. You could print them out and get Dad. some crayons, <laughs> colored pencils, gold school with it. They did that to us at one point. They had a coloring book page of the uh, uh, Haunter set. Remember that? They had like the Haunter Treehouse coloring page and they brought it into our office and Steffi was like, color them in however you'd like. And she like <laughs> handed out the pages and a bunch of colored pencils. And I sat there for so long, like doing shading and like picking all the color and everything <laughs> like that. And then someone walked up, like it was like Matt or something. He's like, I'm done. And it was like blue. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, God damn it. <laughs> I wasted so much time. You were the nicer one. I no, was he's, he's no, the was one with art skills is yeah, what he is. Yeah, I was a fool. I don't think you need art <laughs> skills to color in a coloring book page. No, you do. God, you no, do. No, yeah. Yeah. If, if you see a kid messing it up, you just let, they'll go like, Daddy, look what I did. And they'll show you the coloring And then you go, I, I knew you didn't have any. <laughs> well, you're, like, you're talking about a child's ability to be. <laughs> yeah, and I'm talking about lines. achievement hunters. So really, the difference is small. <laughs> True. True. Oh man, mm. it's hot. God, it's so hot. It is. Yeah, I got my fan on next to me. This office, in particular, it's, it's blazing. It's making hot. it worse because now it just literally hurts to go outside. Not that we could go outside for anything, anyways. <laughs> but now hurts. it just hurts. Well, you can go outside at about eleven o'clock at night. You know, yeah. And that, that was down to about you know eighty five at that point. <laughs> See, I don't really have a chance, a choice. I, I have to go for three walks a day with my dog because otherwise she will eat the house. <laughs> and when I say walk, what I really mean is a 50 pound pit bull pulls me like a sled dog down the street. <laughs> she's adorable, but my God, she is just Strong. when we got her, she had just been hit by a car and it like broke her leg and she was all messed up. She was scrawny. She'd been living on the street. I'm pretty sure if that car came back for round two, she'd break it. She's just <laughs> a tank. Solid, massive muscle. Oh, Little God. pit bull, isn't that uh -huh. what you're talking about? Yep. I love kids. And she's also horribly embarrassing because whenever I take her for a walk and she sees any other dog on the street, she makes noises like she's planning on eating it and then spitting it up just so she can chew on it more. It's like... <laughs> it's real bad. And I feel bad because I'm walking down the street with this giant pit bull that is, she's honestly not aggressive. Like she's real sweet, but you'd think that she was coming for your throat. Katie has to deal with the same thing when she takes Jack for walks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, I don't, <laughs> he's probably really nice, but I feel like he's going to hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> and we, there, there's uh we have some neighbors like we take our dog for a walk and there's some neighbors that have a tiny little it's not a chihuahua but it's a tiny little like you know wiener uh, wiener schnitzel jesus christ wiener dog or something and um it's small enough that it gets out of their back gate or like their back fence it's just like a metal fence like not not a wood plank one and so we'll be walking our dog and this tiny little dog will just run out and just like get right in it right in emma's face our dog's face and it's just like what what the hell man like what happens and like their 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 back fence doesn't have a gate on it too so like if something were to happen to their dog it's like they're gonna have to knock down their own fence to get to it or, or <laughs> jump it and it's just like it's the dumbest thing like people like irresponsible dog owners drive me freaking nuts man oh Same. man it's just like like There's... I, like our dog is on a leash constantly unless we're at a dog park and it's like it... don't you know I, I don't i don't you know you might trust your dog like oh it's the sweetest it's like 
I don't know your dog. Your dog doesn't know my right. dog. Like anything could happen, you know. So there's I don't a guy that lives between fighting dogs. There's a guy that lives down my street that has a Chihuahua that he just lets off the leash in his front yard. And yesterday, as I was walking Bella, the Chihuahua, the Chihuahua decided it wanted to go. Nice. And so I'm running down the street to pull Bella away before she gobbles this little thing up like a Scooby snack. <laughs> <laughs> It yeah. would have been brief and bloody, and it would not have ended well for the off-leash Chihuahua. Yeah, but then, like, but the the shitty thing is, you would have been the one that people would have been like, "How could you have let that happen?" Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. not when it's an dog. off-leash dog. Uh, uh-uh. that's no, that's I mean, on you at that point. I mean, yes, you would yes, hope so, is. but yeah. I mean, that doesn't but... matter to like in general. Someone's like, "Oh, your pit bull ate my dog." It's like, well, okay, if your dog yeah, is attacking dog my pit the bull, idiot. then it's still right. yeah, the it's still on you. In fact, I could sue you for having your dog off-leash. That being said, the headline is still Pitbull eats Chihuahua. You know, yeah. it's like there, there's no no supporting. <laughs> Pitbull eats Chihuahua. There's, there's well, no that's supporting not even a headline. There. That's just no one's surprised. It's right. like, oh, all right. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's one of those things where it's like people like automatically assume it's like, oh, well, you know, you, you have a Pitbull. Obviously, that's the bad one. It's like, well, no, there's. Well, it's, you know, that gets them in the door. They read the headline. They go, oh, Pitbull eats Chihuahua. That's not surprising but i guess i'll let me read the story and then it's, then they read the story and it's like chihuahua's off leash and ran at pitbull like a moron and everybody but, then goes oh yeah yeah i could see the pitbull eating it then but but, but I, I would argue <laughs> any any comment section on reddit it's like people read the headline go right to the comment section and start talking shit it's like no one reads the articles so that's true that's how it goes for anything on the internet yeah, yeah. but i'm not worried about what the internet thinks about my dog they're not coming over to my house to take her so no. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and if they did good luck so leash your dogs everybody <laughs> wear a mask leash your dogs um man. i learned recently why not to trust chilled chaos in video games firsthand <laughs> uh-oh okay. uh, uh-huh. i love love that boy good friend love him and jess uh and he was nice enough to invite me to play project winter with him uh, this oh, yeah. last sunday yeah um which is a fun ass game oh my gosh if you get that going on with seven people i don't i'm i'm so old and decrepit i don't binge play games very much anymore um i can play for like an hour or two and i'm kind of tired and done i play for four hours with them and we all got into a discord call before we got into the game because the game has the in-game chat that's proximity based but in between games we'd be able to talk to each other and before we started we could we could chat we were all streaming and stuff like that and so he started a discord call instead of like a, a, a jumping into a group and so he sent out the call and i jumped in first so it was just me and chilled for about five seconds so really quickly i said hey chill do you want to have an alliance no matter what for this thing and he was like yeah yeah, yeah let's do this so we're like hey secret secret mistake. alliance for project winter yes well mistake mistake yeah. big mistake with him yeah sure enough uh two games in it's me and i think galm uh another m- member of derp crew has been doing stuff with you guys before mm-hmm. we were going into uh, uh it, it was us two and chilled and we were going into like this little uh silo that had supplies and we came out we made a fire and the fire went out and uh and and I was like, oh, I have another thing to make fire. I can make fire. And she was like, no, 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 don't waste making a fire. There was some fire. There was some wood in the in that little silo. Just go get it. Went inside. Sure enough, he had set down a, a, a mine, killed me. And he had spent five minutes prior convincing me that, that who was the bad guy for that <sighs> round. He then yeah. proceeded to come up and start stabbing me. And I'm screaming at him to let me live. We had the alliance. And he just keeps saying, I'm sorry, John. I'm sorry, John. And totally betrayed me cold-blooded. And I've... I've <laughs> decided i will never trust chilled ever again in my yeah, entire chilled life chilled is one of the guys there are several people that you just cannot trust i acknowledge i'm one of them yeah, <laughs> say, yeah you I, I know that. Say that i know that but <laughs> you you can't trust killed chilled or killed because they'll kill you you can't trust chilled and you cannot trust fredo mm-hmm. you cannot that's well, because like, he, he, he even when he's good he's bad yes exactly yeah. <laughs> like it's just you cannot do it uh they, they will turn he i got invited to that night and i ended up being busy i haven't played project winter yet Mm-mm. and i i feel yeah. like 
I would really like it. I know that a big part of that game, though, and one of the reasons we haven't done it, isn't a big part of it like proximity chat? Isn't that? That's what it is, is that you can, it's it's TTT if you guys couldn't hear each other if you weren't close to each other. Yeah. And and it's more, and it's also objective based. The, the people who are good are trying to escape this like frozen, you know, wasteland. Um, and so it's, it's objective based. So you can't, all just stay together or else you won't you won't be able to succeed so you do have to separate you know um so yeah but it's all proximity and it's really really well done you really do hear like voices way off in the distance and then as they go away it's just silent and then when it's silent it's really unnerving wow yeah, we, we've talked about doing that, but it's just like one of those things like that would be kind of a nightmare for our editors because like there could be multiple I, conversations happening. Yeah, I was so. trying to figure out how you could do that logistically for for recordings. It works for like watching someone solo stream. But if you yeah. were doing like with you guys, I have no idea how you record and edit that. Yeah, we yeah. wouldn't be able to control people having conversations at the same time. So it just turned into a big nightmare. <laughs> Are you on the uh, fall guy train right now, John? Yeah, I, I've got it. I play a little bit of it. We've got we're gonna play it for we've we've got our our stream block on our TTV on one day now, so it's Tuesdays, and we're gonna do next week. Speaking of chilled, we're gonna have chilled and Gom come play Fall Guys with us uh, <laughs> for like three hours on Tuesday. <laughs> nice. I don't. Think, well, he can still betray you in that. You know. Yeah, total, total oh, betrayal absolutely. options in that one. Mm-hmm. Oh man, we recorded a TTT today with Ify. And uh, my God, the sheer amount of shit that happened in that episode. So if he is a loose cannon, but of a he, very he, different variety than what yeah. we're used to. He, he doesn't he need much convincing. <laughs> <laughs> at one point, last... I just looked at him and he just shot me. He's like, you were looking at me and he just murdered me. <laughs> yeah, and he was innocent. Like, he wasn't yeah, even exactly. a traitor. It was like, what the hell? Yeah. So, I, um, I watch your guys' TT stuff. I think it's genuinely the best thing you guys put out yeah, right now. And agree. and it, it's one of my favorite things to put. I cook a lot, and so I put I set up my phone. You have you guys do TTT in the background while I cook. It's a great way to pass time. And wasn't it the last time, Iffy, were you guys in like the, the tiny person room? Yeah. And we he were, yeah. killed Michael after Gavin shot him. Probably. And, and, and and murdered him for Gavin's own like and I think someone even yelled <laughs> yeah. like Gavin's bad Gavin's bad so if he turns around and shoots Michael because he thought that was Gavin's avatar <laughs> yeah if he will like his character will feel pain and then lash out at the first like that he sees and 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 like you know you often go like no 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 wait wait stop like let me explain but it's too late it's too late you'll yeah. usually die if you try to reason man that game is so much fun though my my the absolute the best thing in the entire game are the weeping angels yeah like that is my go-to and it's like it's i use it so much now that like if other people use a weeping angel they, everyone assumes it's me because like oh jack used that literally every it's like if if there's a grappling hook or a weeping angel it's probably i'm probably bad is what it jack i've been to. trying to help you out with that by using it more i'm trying yeah. dude i we i once we found out that like the weeping angel is fiona's kryptonite like she, she just melts so into a puddle yeah it's like i can't not use it on her because it's so funny just watching her react to it and um yeah there, there were some good weeping angel plays in this this one we recorded today that uh there, there's some good stuff and it, like, it's fun too when you're dead and you're just flying around watching the angels track people oh my god it's it's so great it's yeah it's so much fun i unfortunately Especially, lost my webcam on the one that we did today um again be, oh that's right. a whole thing but i got my gameplay uh props to the editors for when they reanimate you guys with your they're gonna be doing that they have to do that for mine <laughs> on uh this coming one but i got that fucking weeping angel because like i haven't really had the weeping angel on me before i had it on me like two or three times on the one we recorded today and it's fucking terrifying <laughs> like i feel like i know she's around here so i'm like looking for the last person it's awful because like it's it starts like they're like praying and then ultimately like, it turns to them like doing that before they get you yeah and watching them go to that is so unnerving <laughs> yeah oh, it's, it's terrifying is there, is there any way to get rid of a weeping angel or is it a it mm-hmm. follows no matter what kind of it thing. follows you yeah. yeah well actually you know you you did have find a solution to the weeping angel uh in today's let's play no spoilers uh, oh <laughs> no i'm not yeah. gonna spoil it yeah i mean there is sort of a solution <laughs> i mean you can you can win i guess <laughs> well you can win say, or is, th- is 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 finishing the round before they can get you is is the real well that, that's like the one well, way that to too, yeah yeah there's no. that but there's also a way that you can kind of die without dying it's, it's sort of a way around it uh, but uh yeah we had a lot of things in the games that uh 
<laughs> slowly come into play. I was reading that someone said we should replace the uh, the boomerang with a moon ball. That'd be great. That'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah, I even think just the, the best, skin change would be awesome. Yeah. The best thing you guys have added is the harpoon. The harpoon is fucking <laughs> hilarious. It's that's like just Gavin, man. He's all over. Yeah, that that's why. It's because Gavin's, Gavin's new just... thing is he spends every single one of his trader credits because we give the traders a lot of credits. They have like 10. Yeah. And they can like just keep buying shit. Um, and Gavin will spend all of them on barnacles and then he'll pick <laughs> a room and he'll just like he likes to double bar like he puts one on the ceiling. I'll put one right next to it. So as soon as you're out, you walk into the next one. <laughs> yeah. He'll do it on every door into the room that he's in, and that's like his new thing. Especially with Chung to Chua. his detriment, he's killed himself with it in the past. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, it's very easy to kill yourself with the with the barnacle because you think that, you're be putting it in a good mm -hmm. spot, and then it just snags you. Or he said they're terrible for your teammate too, because your your teammate don't never see knows where they are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But th that being said, being the jester or the swapper and spotting Gavin doing that is like the best thing ever. Because you just <laughs> run and start getting caught in each one of them, and you can just hear him like, <sighs> like, like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna trigger all these traps you set up so uh, so you know delicately. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna walk yep. through all of them. That's the best. And also the cigarette. I don't know why the cigarette is like the funniest thing to me. Just that's sitting just there cosmetic, smoking. right? Yeah, yeah it, it does, it does literally nothing. And it's a, it's a spit out smoke of a different color. And it's just so fun to sit there and like watch people die and just, just keep yep. smoking. <laughs> yeah, Ryan looked at me smoking a cigarette in this video and he goes, oh, I know what this means. Like thinking I was the jester, right? He goes, I know uh -huh. what this means. And I go, it doesn't mean what you think it means. <laughs> yeah. It's just fun to just do it, especially with Fiona, like post smoking is the funniest fucking thing. To do. <laughs> like just like, post sitting there like. We've got a good mix of people who are actually trying to play the game and like people are just having fun with it. Uh -huh. I think we've got a good balance of kind of like, like I'm never going to win in any shooter is what it comes down to. Like that is just, that's not going to happen. I understand that I've come to terms with that, but I can have fun and I can hopefully get some laughs out of people mm -hmm. or just be so annoying that it's just hilarious to me. Like my that's my usual go to that. Like on that vein of like, not really trying, but like, you know, kind of having fun with it. That has, I don't think, I think it's yet to work out for me is if I'm the hypnotist, which is the one where you bring people back to life as a trader, I will walk up to an innocent person and show them it and go like, <laughs> you could you could be this. <laughs> like, it just so rarely works out. <laughs> it's your elevator pitch to be a trader. Right. I'm like, you could join us. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Well, I saw one of, one of my favorite things ever in TTT was one it was me gavin and fiona were together it was, it was the outdoor map with like the the watchtower and the cabin and stuff and the wreck train okay yeah yeah. and it the, the round started and i was i was a trader and then uh gavin or fiona was the other trader and one was a glitch and it was the three of us right next to each other we just started there <laughs> and i was like and it's like we were looking at each other and then i pulled out a harpoon and then gavin pulled out a harpoon and then fiona went flying <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's the spider-man meme with three people and then two yeah. of them pull out harpoons. if you hear yeah. someone in a ttt game say uh either show it or pull it out mm -hmm. It means that there's <laughs> zombies and there's a glitch. <laughs> That's what it yeah. means. It means the zombies are next to someone and they need to know if it's another zombie or not. No, and the that's funniest thing that's happened recently in any of your, your GMOT stuff was Jack as the trash can and Alfredo oh. as like the little <laughs> burger. Because Alfredo oh. was the it was the hide and seek and Alfredo oh, hides yeah, behind yeah. the dumpster. And so Jack goes alfredo and he just flips the dumpster around and looks at him <laughs> and yeah. back alfredo goes, what the hell <laughs> like the whole dumpster yeah. is just jack <laughs> hello and it Man. worked i think you guys won that round i think no one caught probably you guys. we gotta yeah. play more prop hunt prop hunt's fucking fun no it's a good so one. stupid we did we did some explosive barrel recently too that'll be coming out pretty soon mm -hmm. that was fun oh, that's that right. was you definitely guys did, like you guys did one video of that a while back yeah a long a while, time yeah. ago but uh the, the thing about that is just like it's the zombie mentality where it like starts off as like okay there's just one but by the end of it it's like five barrels just rushing you and it's yeah. terrifying so <laughs> it, it, it visually looks really good so anyway man. yeah so good jeremy are you excited for mulan hitting disney plus yeah Le yeah dude i'm, I'm <laughs> excited because i love movies so much but I have no desire to get this stupid virus. Uh, the more, did I get kicked out? 
No, you're still no, here. You're still you're here. here. Oh. John? I heard, John? No, I just heard. I, I, I heard. Oh, God. Shut up. What? what? <laughs> We can hear you. What are you talking about? We okay, can still I heard, see you. I, I heard the goodbye sound in, in Discord, the disconnect sound. Oh, no, no, you're still here. We can still okay. hear you. Uh, I was lost no, his goddamn mind. I have lost my goddamn mind. That's that's a truth. Uh, no, it's that uh, I, I hope the Mulan thing is actually the start of a bunch of companies doing that. Um, someone's going in and out of this room and I'm hearing it over and over again. Uh, oh. Stop it, you little fuck. He's muting yourself. Jeremy what are you doing? Time. I was just leaving the room and coming back in. <laughs> like, it's just fucking, as soon as John was like, someone's making that noise, I just started jumping out of the room and coming back into the room. No, I have Man. to. Oh my god, I, I'm. I have that. Just reminds me of a, a better what I was saying. Uh, I was playing. What was I? I was I was streaming something a week or so ago, and. Uh, all of a sudden, and it was like late night in my house. I'm, I was alone. It was a day that my kids are out of my house. And in my head, at one point in the stream, I could hear someone far away, like like a room away from me, alone in my house, because my mic feeds into my headset. So I hear my voice and anything else. And so I heard it faintly. And then about 10 minutes later, I heard another faint noise and I was freaking out that someone was in my house. And so I like, I, I, I freaked out my chat because I went, what was that? And I just put my headphones down and walked away. And that was the last <laughs> thing they saw was me go off into the dark nice. and then be out there for about a minute, turn all my lights, check my door and everything that came back. Um, turns out uh that was the same day a while back do you remember the, uh, there was a day that discord servers completely crapped out um mm -hmm. halfway yep. through the day yeah yeah uh andrew uh, uh drew drew saplin and i had been in a call earlier it had crapped out so that ended our recording he had never left the room and neither had i and so <laughs> his mic was live this entire time and because of like the noise suppression that discord does it didn't catch like all the noise until he was loud enough that it like triggered and so i heard drew like a, a room away <laughs> in my head so then i had to call him on the phone and tell him dude you're still in the discord call with me freaked me out <laughs> that's awesome dude. i had something very similar the other night i answered my front door armed because it was about <laughs> it was like 1 or 2 a.m or something and i was laying in bed and i was watching a video and i watch a lot of like achievement hunter compilations it's kind of like how i gather like moments from videos because i don't really watch the whole videos anymore so um i like watch all these compilations and someone had made a compilation where they were like keeping track of something it was like keeping track of how many rounds like jeff died or something like that and the noise for like putting a new tally was a doorbell and it was the doorbell like the sound of my doorbell <laughs> and it was one of those things i don't know if you've ever seen streamers that get tricked by that video clip that has the knocking sound like no. it plays a knocking sound and it sounds like it's in the fucking room with you this doorbell for whatever reason sounded like it was coming from the house so it's like 1 or 2 a.m. and the doorbell rings. And I'm like looking at my cameras and like checking out all the cameras and I'm looking out the front door and I don't see anyone. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? I like wake up cat. I'm like, cat, I'm going to the front door. Like, watch my back. <laughs> like, I just really, I got so freaked out. And then like I went back to the video, I played it again and the doorbell popped up in the video. And I looked at the comments and everyone's like, that doorbell scared the shit out of me. It's like all the comments. I'm like, God damn it. Fuck. Uh, no. All, all, all I was saying was, I hope this is a trend that these movies, because I basically, I want to see Wonder Woman and I want to see Tenet, but I don't want to wait. And so if they could just send those directly to me and I could spend 30 bucks, yeah. I, I want those. Yeah, we're, we're part of the Warner family. Where's Papa Warner? Let us see. Let us watch Wonder Woman. I, I want to see God. Kristen Wiig as Cheetah. So thir yeah. 30 bucks, that's your, your price point for an at-home movie. You'd be good with $30 for a new movie. I, yeah. I would think so. I mean, I like, I, I, I mean, these are movies I want to see. Like Katie and I were going to see Mulan. Katie and I were going to go see the, you know, black. Like I don't mind spending that kind of money to see those movies because like that's supporting a lot of people who made those films. And it's like, we would easily spend that. We, I mean, it was, you know, 12 bucks a piece on tickets and then we get food too. And I imagine for a family of four or, a, you know, anyone with a kid, 
that's going to be cheaper than going to see a movie in a theater anyway, right? Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, it costs I, I think... $40 just to leave the house with a child. <laughs> There's just a the deposit box outside yeah, your house to leave. Pretty much. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if especially if like you have another person with you watching it, it 100% rationalizes it. And also, I just get to watch from like a lot of like extra paying stuff right now. Stop it! Someone else, someone else just left and came into the Discord. You guys are doing it every oh, fucking time. I'm not hearing that, so I don't yeah. know what you're talking about. That was not uh, me. Is that driving us, John? <laughs> It makes me go crazy. <laughs> now I can see you muting and unmuting your mic. It doesn't make a noise. It's leaving and entering the room. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, no, it's uh, paying a little extra right now to not go get virus is what I'll pay. Uh, I'll pay mm-hmm. extra for stuff. Yeah, I just I I'm more than anything like I'm the, a big MCU nerd and I just want to see more MCU. We haven't seen an, an MCU movie since Spider Man. And that was yeah. like over a year. And it's like, it, like, ah, give me more like Black Widow. Which, I mean, we would be seeing Eternals like very soon. It's like, I oh, want shit, that. we would. Yeah. Like Eternals is, I think. Uh, it was like an August or September August, release. Yeah. Something like that. So it's like. And also Ghostbusters is in there in the Heights is yeah. in there. Like there's so many movies I wanted to see that I'm like, uh, and I mean, I understand not wanting to drop a film because you're not going to make as much money on uh, on any kind of streaming service yep. that's not in a theater i mean that's just the thing so it's like the idea and also the idea of like we're gonna drop black widow which is gonna be the first you know or i guess captain marvel is the first female lead but like this is a character who's been around since iron man 2 and it's like we're gonna drop this movie it's not gonna make as much it just looks bad in general so it's like but i just want i want more mcu and now like i'm i'm i, I watch new rock stars which is just like a, they do a lot of fan theories and stuff and they're talking about x-men and how like the x-men suppose like their theory is that like every movie in phase four is going to have an X-Men in it or an, an, like a, a mutant in it somewhere. And then that will eventually tie into eventually making an X-Men movie or something along those lines. So oh, like, the, I, I, which is fascinating. I would love to see new mutants too. Oh yeah. That new was mutants. another one. That's another one that got delayed again for like the 10th time. <laughs> yeah. Which new mutants technically is like the, the sort of wraps up all of the Fox X-Men universe theoretically. If it, if it, oh, is that fo- what it, so that still lives in the Fox universe? Yes. It was filmed in the Fox universe. Mm. Yeah, so it I don't was know if filmed it's... eons ago, and it was, and then it was in like post. Eons during ago the... is number three. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> it's like it's like it's like Pee Wee's Playhouse is the word yeah. of the day. <laughs> it's the word, and it's all me. I just keep using it. I'm stuck on that <laughs> word. Uh, it's a good word. Anyway, um, just, just years give me more ago, of that. years ago, there was, you go. but it was it was filmed when uh when Disney was trying to acquire Fox, and so it put New Mutants in this limbo that has perpetuated all the way through now. Anyway, hmm. Black Widow was supposed to be May. Eternals was November. Thank you, Angelic Rocker. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, how I, I feel about. Oh, go ahead. I was just saying like that, and then you've got Falcon and Winter Soldier, and then you've got WandaVision. I mean, like. Those are Disney Plus. Those are Disney Plus, but they fit within the canon of the MCU. So they're actually yeah. telling stories that are important. Um, yeah. And it's just like, damn it. Like, there's so I many don't... things. Like, they're teasing Sword now. Like, Sword is starting to pop up. Like, people are seeing set photos of stuff. And Shang Chi's filming right now. They actually just started filming again in Australia, I think, for Shang Chi. Sword? Uh, Sword, Sword is what Nick Fury was on at the end of, uh, at the end of oh. Spider-Man Homecoming. Or uh, Far From Home. It's, it's, their, it's, it's the offensive version of S.H.I.E.L.D., basically. Oh, they actually, like, that's that's part of comics. They're making a show about S.W.O.R.D.? Well, I mean, that's that's where they're leading towards S.W.O.R.D. Like, so oh, okay. S.H.I.E.L.D. is, like, the, you know, strategic homeland, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, yeah, Sword, S.W.O.R.D.'s from the comics. It's, like, the space version of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, and that, that's the idea of, like, you know, Far From Home, it, like, it, the, it, the, you know, spoiler alert, at the PS of Far From Home, it cuts to Nick Fury on a crazy spaceship with a bunch of scrolls. Oh, that's right. That they're alluding to that being Sword. That's like their space base for Sword. And so we're starting to get into some weird shit in the comics, and I love that kind of stuff. I love I'm they're a, getting into it. I'm a so. terrible comic fan. I didn't make that connection. How yeah. do you guys feel How about dare the, you? the the entrance of mutants into the MCU? Because uh, up to this point. They've really lived in a world where if somebody had special abilities, it was either due to the influence of one of the the stones, essentially, or technology slash drugs, things like that. Not like there born is, with it type. Thing. Yeah, there's not like a lot of just straight up mutants uh, I, I, in that world, which keeps it a little more grounded because those things make more sense, sort of. I know I'm saying like yeah. 
cosmic stones makes more sense than mutation, but the, the, uh, the they do. <laughs> the common theory I'm hearing right now, well, there's a few, but the one I'm hearing that's the most plausible in my opinion is that the the snaps uh, mm. basically exuded this radiation across the planet that triggered dormant mutant genes in people. And so like that maybe mm. will start triggering like effects in, in people, you know, like, cause like Cyclops, like Scott Summers, he was in high school when he when he became Cyclops, and it's like mm -hmm. he, that. That's not just something. It's like one day, like oh, now I'm shooting lasers out of my eyes. Like that is something that's pretty significant. So it's like I, having some kind of thing that triggered this. You know, I could see that happening. But I wonder I, if they'll lean um, into that idea with. I mean, since he snapped the gems out of existence in that universe, so they don't exist as much there. Uh, maybe the their energy is now freed into the universe and it's causing that influence because again they've everybody we've met with powers like Scarlet Witch it's because she was exposed to the stone. Uh, well, and no, now I if mean, you can just assume that exposure has gone wide. Well, the the gems are still in existence because Cap went back and put them all back. Remember at the end? No, but those are different universes, Jack. Those don't they don't exist in the MCU okay. universe. He put them back okay. in the different okay. branches. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And the the nineteen nine 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 universe or whatever. It's, it's yeah. not the six one six. It's the nine one nine nineteen. If Thanos 99. wasn't lying, lying, it could be their twist could be that he he just lied, even though they made quite clear that he was not a liar, which is the entire premise for why they had to travel through time. But yeah. But that, that also being said, like, like I like the idea of like uh, someone mentioned that Rogue could show up in Captain Marvel too, because in the comics, initially Rogue got her power. She had the ability to like just take power from people. She ended mm -hmm. up touching Captain Marvel, and that's where she got her flight from and a lot of her strength from. And so it's like, oh, that'd be kind of a cool way to introduce that. Like someone who has the ability to kind of drain power is like, oh yeah, let's and, and like that. Like I, I could see them. So, whoa, Jesus Christ! <laughs> whoa. What's happening? <laughs> Trip. This, What's this, happening? Is, this is Jeremy having nothing to contribute to this conversation. I mean, I know about the MCU. It's just I don't yeah. know as much as anyone here. <laughs> but anyway, I, I, if New Rockstars just put out a video, I think yesterday or two days ago, like kind of saying like if they were going to drop a mutant in one in every movie in, in phase four, it's like here's how, their theory on how it would go. And they actually say um, since Black Widow takes place in Russia, um, you might see Colossus in, in prison some, with uh, with with uh with uh crimson not crimson soldier what what's what whatever um dynamo. david yeah crimson dynamo yeah so you might see him in prison with him or something it's like oh it'd be kind of a cool little easter egg to be like oh hey you know P peter or whoever like someone like that throw that in there Piotr. and then you've got you know wandavision's got you know she's got her two kids which is wiccan and um oh god it's, it's the, the other... speedy boy yeah it's Quick like silver. another no, Quicksilver's uh, well, her brother. Damn it. Well, he said Speedy it's, Boy. It's, I was like, I, I'm about to go for he's, it. He's like a Quicksilver, but he's yeah. he's uh, the, the the young twin version. But even even like you know, like the, her father theoretically could be you know could be a freaking um, Magneto. So it's like that'd be I, so I don't know. weird to like retcon that in at this point, though. Because again, we've lived in a universe where it's like literally dire straits. They were at There's, the wall, and none of those people showed up. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's like if it's a dormant gene kind of situation, mm -hmm. it could be that like you know Maximoff is her dad, you know, like you know Magneto is her dad, and now it triggers in him like, oh my god, I have these powers, like because like you could argue the the stone is what triggered Quicksilver and, and Scarlet Witch, um, and like they sort of unlocked the power they had in them, and it now would be it's so like, weird to have a year one Magneto though. That's like because his character is so built on rage yeah. and intolerance. Um, speed is the because other one. of the life that he experienced and just have him go from being some normal schmo to be like now i'm going to be the, the the terrorist leader of the the mutants yeah that would be very i strange. mean i'm sure they can find a way to make that work that people oh, would yeah. be like all about they're good at like finding ways to stay true to the comics but also like weave their own stories that people go okay that's a good twist on it i like that mm -hmm. like they're, yeah. they've been really good about doing that I, and i trust kevin feige and he's sort yeah. of the the overarching hand in the entire mcu and what he's doing is so good a lot of people are asking for uh charlie cox to pop in in the new spider-man movie as daredevil even just like as a little like aside you know like you know spider-man or peter parker has to get a lawyer and encounters, you know, like Matt. God, I'd love that. Like, that would yeah, be great. That would be. Can they do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's all owned by it's, it's all owned by Marvel. Like they have the rights to that. They actually had I it written Netflix into the script. Some, oh, I was into the, 
yeah, they, they had it written into the script for uh, Endgame that they oh, yeah, were in no, it in that fi- in that final fight scene. Like it mm-hmm. was all written in and, and storyboarded out and everything for uh, the what is it? The Defenders? Is that what it's called? Defenders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For all the Defenders to show up, and then like they just didn't end up doing it for the film. And I was like, fuck, yeah. that would have been so cool. But I, I think the idea of like having you know like Matt and Foggy show up and and because like they're such an important part of New York. Like, you know, there's so there's certain characters that are like these are New York characters and Daredevil is very much a New York character. Spider-Man's a New York character. And like, I like the idea of bringing them into that world as well. I think that I think that'd be pretty cool and a nice like kind of like honoring the fans of that show. And that, I mean, he was great, too. Like he was like Charlie Cox is great as Matt Murdock. So mm-hmm. um, no, they were tremendous. I just uh, I wasn't sure if Netflix retains some kind of control over those. I property don't... not. I mean, they obviously they don't own the property, but do yeah. they own the version that yeah. was portrayed there but even like like vincent d'onofrio is kingpin like that was mm-hmm. awesome and like yeah, if you're gonna was, if you're gonna do yeah. kingpin that's not just like a giant brawler like that's such a perfect way to do that character and so anyway i, I would love to see those guys pop up in, in the mcu if possible but they've got a lot on their hands between now and whenever they decide to stop doing yeah. this so. and it's a weird time it's a weird time right now for films to try to get stuff a like f- to have all the crew on set to film stuff like that and then be releasing it like it's yeah. all challenges within itself yeah so. oh, we're also, having uh, similar discussions with anything we talk about filming right now it's like how do you do this in a way that doesn't expose people to each other yeah yeah because yeah, that's the thing is like when do we start doing a cheap monitor productions not at home and it's like well personally me like i don't want to leave my house and, until i know i'm safe and like because i'm I'm older. I'm not as in shape as some of the younger ones. So it's like, I'm like, I don't want to die. I love you guys, but I don't want to die for my job. So it's um, a, it's a way that I keep com- like, uh, helping my kids process the choices we make is that anything you go out and do, is that worth getting sick for that could either hurt you or hurt someone else? Is that activity worth that? Because almost, yeah. uh, almost any activity you do, if you are in close proximity with people, you know, uh, that's that's a choice you have to make because that's like that's the the mantra i've been talking with my kids about it why we don't go do things i had such a weird experience the other day because uh, the first time during the entire quarantine i actually had my kids wear masks and took them somewhere and it was to go to the dentist and the dentist had been great about maintaining really good uh, sanitary conditions but it was so weird to be out in the world with my kids again like we got in the yeah. car and we went to a building and we all got out of the car and went yeah. in the building oh i haven't taken my kids into another building other than my house since this started we've gone in the car like i said we go for drives and mm-hmm. that kind of thing mm-hmm. and i've taken them for walks in secluded places although i've even stopped doing that now that it got austin got even worse um but I have not taken them inside of a building. Yeah. It's weird, man. It's such a my, weird time. My Ugh. parents invited me to dinner. It's gross. Yeah. My parents, <laughs> my parents invited me to dinner at a restaurant. And I'm like, what? No. Why? <laughs> That's a terrible idea. But yeah, it could be fun. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it. Um, don't, please don't do it. Not worth don't it. Don't do it. Not worth it. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, like yeah. I can't control my parents. Like, they still go. They go out like to restaurants where they have like outdoor seating, yeah. and like even still, like I I get it. It's safer because like you know you're sitting in that outdoor setting, and then all the tables are six feet apart and everything like that, and everyone's wearing masks. But still, I'm like, yeah. I mean, if you really, I mean, I would like if you didn't, but if that's really what you want to do, then go for it. I just know my dad's going stir crazy. So I'm like, nah, go for it. <laughs> Whatever. Cat and I will stay in. You guys do your thing. Oh. Anyways, that's probably, that's probably it. I think. I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> and, yeah. and, we talked talk about movies. On a, on a nice note. Well, you know, we talked about the MCU and mutants well, so, and stuff like that. That's cool. Sorry, I, I was I was typing in chat because someone said, what about like Apocalypse and Logan and like, and like uh, you know, Sabretooth, like the characters, like the mutants that have been around for like 200 years. Like that's a big backstory for Logan is that he's been around since the 1800s. And it's like, I, I actually, I heard a rumor. Well, one of the things that theory was that like Eternals may introduce Apocalypse as like this is a person that's been around forever which could be a cool way to do it i mean if you're going to start playing around with that kind of stuff that would be the way to do it in my opinion i think a really so. good comic 
series that you could pull some inspiration from from how they dealt with doing the x-men new and again was when brian michael bendis did the ultimate x-men it was the whole ultimate universe which is what a lot of the mcu has mm -hmm. been based on i mean even the fact that we have a uh, uh, black uh, uh nick fury that's the ultimate version the the yeah. normal comic version old you know gray-haired white dude um and so they've pulled a lot of inspiration from the ultimate universe and so i think how they did x-men um which was a little bit of like the x-men showing up in a world that was already a little bit established with the avengers um there's a chance that they could do it with that which was it was it was actually actually the mutants in that version were a little bit science-based um and actually their origins are based in wolverine wolverine was kind mm -hmm. of turned into canonically the origins of the wolverine of, of the mutant race mm -hmm. um but uh i think that could be that's that's my theory is a way you could do it but i'm with jack i kevin feige has done such a good job with the majority him and his crew i don't want to put feige as the only one but him and and the people he surrounded himself with have done a very good job make x-men movies you know that are awesome because i haven't had an awesome x-men movie in a very long time yeah and it's my favorite comic ever yeah i'm ex i'm excited like we, we actually I mean, 300 years ago, when Iron Man 2 was coming out, um, the Alamo Draft House reached out to us about shooting, about producing a little short film uh, that they would show before showing Iron Man 2. And, uh, and so we made this thing where it was like Sarge got boots, like Iron Man boots, where he could fly around and made this really cute little short thing to start it to like open the movie. So if you saw the Draft House, you could watch that. And then that was the night at the Draft House in Austin where um, uh, uh, it was John Favreau and Robert Downey Jr. showed up for the actual film, like said hi to everyone. I was like, holy shit. And so I got to see them, but I got to meet Kevin Feige there. And that was right when he was kind of like, this is growing, you know, like this is mm -hmm. becoming something big. And he was just the nicest, most down to earth kind of guy. I mean, like, I mean, you know, he wasn't who he is now, but it's like, still, it's like, okay, this guy's a nerd. And like he was just a nerd who enjoyed making this stuff. And I'm like, that's it. We need nerds. We, we need nerds. nerds. <laughs> and it's like, these nerds. are the people that are going to like, take care of it and treat it right and treat it with the respect it deserves. And so he's a fanboy and he's making movies where he can be a fanboy. And it's like, you know, as much as we get excited about this stuff, I think he does too. And that's what I love about, that's what I love about the MCU. I love that. It's just like these cool one-off movies that are so radically different. You watch something like, you know, uh, like Captain America, like, uh, you know, Winter Soldier versus like Guardians of the Galaxy. Like they're so radically different, but they can still exist in this universe. And then you mm -hmm. take something like Endgame, which wraps up 21 movies and does it so well it's like damn that is an impressive feat and uh and yeah and it's like i know a lot of people like oh there's comic book movies it's like but there's so much more than that like it's it's so like this the technical side of it alone let alone the creative side of taking all of these threads and putting them together is just it, it, it blows me away and i i respect the hell out of them and it's i it pisses me on people like oh they're just trash comic movies it's like no no no. it's 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 a story it's ah. anyway i get crazy about it but anyway wear a mask <laughs> don't go out <laughs> At least your dogs. <laughs> I'm done. I think they're great movies. They're great. Anyways, wear a mask. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, on that note, uh, I want to say to, to everyone watching, uh, thank you very much for watching live. If you were here for this show live, uh, we're live throughout the week on our DJ TV. Junk. DJ, DJ Junk, Junk tomorrow is night. tomorrow night. Uh, so watch that. You. Do you have to be a first member to watch DJ Junk or? No, this is on our TV. You just have to watch it at roosterteeth.com. So 10 o'clock central tomorrow night. I'm going to be playing music for an hour ish or so. And people are dancing and, and not like you got to crank up your speakers. It's fun. There I'll you be go. There. Be there for that. Be there for uh, all of our live content here on RTTV. You don't need to sign. Uh, you just need to sign up to the chat. You don't have to pay anything. It's totally free. Um, but if you want to be in the chat and, and, you know, joining along, make sure to uh, sign up, make an account, chat along. It's fun. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of gameplay, a lot of podcasts. And uh, the next thing coming up is effing around with Iffy and Fiona. Uh, with special guest Chloe Naylor, uh, and they're playing some Fall Guys. So you can't get enough of Fall Guys. Everyone loves Fall Guys. Fall Guys. It's so the good. thing. Jeremy, it you're playing Ark right again now. tomorrow. Are you, are you in Ark tomorrow? I'm in Ark tomorrow, yes. I'm Me excited to watch Trevor react to what Ryan did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have this big gurn. Uh, here's the thing about killing dodos. They're trash birds that take three seconds to tame. So someone already replaced them. They're back already. I replaced all of Trevor's birds. <laughs> every, one of, every one of Trevor's dodos has been replaced with 
new stinky new <laughs> i love the idea that any of us would care about one of our animals in a game i, I, I like the, this big girl when people when someone released <laughs> edgar that was amazing to me because it's like cool i get to do something with this <laughs> i have this oh, well. big gurn and i like this big gurn uh but that's tomorrow so make sure to watch our live tomorrow and then we'll be doing something else uh i think sea of thieves and then yep yeah and, and then dj jonk will be at night so Junk. check all that good shit out and uh we will see you guys next week thanks for tuning in Doodaloo. bye, bye everyone Thank you.